Funding for Chasing Frames is provided by Nikon and On One Software. We got some star trails in there. The exposure was open so long. And we've got some nice light coming over there that I'm gonna bring in. This kind of shot is a cool, fun shot this time of night. Do you wanna see it? Do you wanna see the absolute magic of light travel? Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey. I've traveled the world for the last 16 years as a professional photographer, photographing faces and documenting stories. Join me in our new series, Chasing Frames, where we learn from some incredibly inspiring people who work hard to transform lives, protect our planet, and rescue those in need. You know, I think for me, studying the cosmos, it's part of trying to understand ourselves, where we come from, how we fit into the universe. You know, we as curious, people as a, as a species, we just want to understand, you know, where we are, how we fit in, what's the meaning of everything, how does it all come together, you know, make sure that we are not squandering this resource that we have and, and to, you know, deal more kindly with one another, as Carl Sagan said in that brilliant speech about the pale blue dot. So he had the uh, opportunity to get the Voyager spacecraft to turn around and take a picture of the Earth from, uh, you know, close to the edge of the solar system. He took this picture and the Earth was just a tiny, tiny dot, just a pixel in this image. And by presenting that perspective, by showing us that we are just this tiny speck of dust, it really gave this idea that, you know, we don't have somewhere else to go. You know, these divisions that we create between ourselves are really pretty artificial. And we have just this one little spot that we live on that we need to protect and we need to treasure. And I think that's a really important thing that can come out of the study of the universe is really giving us some perspective on where we are and what we mean. So whenever we look out into the world, I mean, even just in this room, not, not even looking out into space, we're always seeing what we're seeing at a bit of a delay, right? Because light takes time to travel. And it turns out light takes about a nanosecond to travel a foot. So even if I'm just looking at you a few feet away, I'm looking at a few nanoseconds in the past. And when we go out into the universe, we're looking even farther into the past years or decades or millennia or you know even millions or billions of years into the past. So everything we see out in, this, in the sky, we're seeing as it was at an earlier time in the universe. And so when we look at the most distant things, we're actually looking directly at an, a, a younger universe. We're looking at the universe as it was when it was in its earliest moment. The sky is a time machine. Yeah. In one direction to the past. Everything you see, you see when the light left it in the past. Every star's got a different timeline? Yep. Okay. Even the moon you're seeing in the past. The moon is 1.3 light seconds away. Not that the moon necessarily looks different from second to second, right, right. but still. Yeah. I mean, it'll so blow your mind. Delay. We're yeah. on a, delay. a light year is, uh, sounds like a unit of time, but it's a unit of distance. So one light year is the distance that light travels in a year. And so light, of course, moves very fast. <laughs> Fastest yeah. thing in the yeah. universe, 186,000 miles a second. So if you, if you work out the math, one light year translates to um, close to six trillion miles. So um, when we broadcast TV and radio, mm -hmm. if it leaves Earth's atmosphere and goes off into space, it's traveling at the speed of light because radio and TV are forms of light. So all forms of light travel at the speed of light. And because it's electromagnetic. It's on the electromagnetic spectrum. Which so the, automatically means it's a form of light. Right, okay. We decided to illustrate the concept of light travel ourselves by using a photographic technique called light painting, which lets you see everywhere a light was while a camera shutter is open and capture it all in one frame by simply photographing that light in the dark. I think as long as you're like this, it's okay. If you start going here, it starts getting to my lens, but here you're okay. I think one of the most amazing parts of being a photographer is you kind of have to learn a little bit about everything you shoot in order to better shoot it. And in this case, we got to learn a lot more about what it means when you're talking about light that kind of goes out here and ends up 80 trillion years later. We did kind of the same thing here, but like 75 to 80 seconds later. <laughs> same concept, dramatically different, but very cool all the same. We can see light left over from the Big Bang, and that means that we're, we're actually looking at light 
that's coming to us from something so far away that we're seeing that part of the universe as it was right at the beginning, you know, the first few hundreds of thousands of years after the beginning, whatever that was. So we're, we're really seeing the past and we're really seeing sort of our origins. And we can sort of extrapolate that, you know, if every other part of the universe that we can see was in this sort of hot primordial soup in the early times, then you know that's that tells us something about our origins too. So by looking at really distant things, we're looking into the past, and by looking at the past in other parts of the universe, we learn about what the past was like here and where we came from. Partially because of that, I do think about the world differently, and I, I do think of us as being in this very fragile place. So we have this ecosystem around us, we are on this livable world, and most of the universe is just not like that. We really do have to take care of what we have, and, and the Earth is the place where we can live. It is our home and is the, the only place that we can live. What we need to do now is preserve what we have, and studying the rest of the universe is, is really a stark reminder of that, because what's out there is, is not for us. It was pretty extraordinary learning all about the connection between the vastness of the universe and beyond and what we need to pay attention to today to better protect our planet. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out an extended episode on our website where you'll also see a deep dive into light painting through photography as well as what you can do after you take your shot. Thank you.